me on this episode of Taking It From The Top, where we'll be discussing some hot tips on how to play the baritone saxophone. Step one, lift with your legs, not your back! Whenever I approach playing the baritone saxophone, my checklist always prioritizes good posture and good breathing habits. I often ask myself, am I carrying myself and my instrument in a way that allows myself to build good breathing habits? Am I truly allowing myself to take a deep breath at every opportunity I have to do so? And am I allowing the midsection of my body expand naturally with each breath? It is through this active and mindful approach to posture and breathing habits that will allow us to safely and effectively practice this instrument. In terms of building good breathing habits, practicing yoga or taking part in physical activities that challenge your cardiovascular fitness are great ways to build awareness of your breathing mechanisms. Some other principles to keep in mind are approaches from Alexander Technique like the balloon attached to the top of your head to make sure you're playing with an open posture and making sure that when you're breathing we're not lifting our shoulders to introduce excess tension whenever we take in that deep breath. A few small tips that can take your playing a long way revolve around the idea that you want to control the instrument and not the other way around. For example, if my neck strap was set too low, I would have to compromise my posture to be able to get into a playing position. Conversely, if I had the neck strap set too high, well, good luck trying to play the saxophone with your nose. But if we can find this area that's just right, the instrument will come straight into our embouchure setting, allowing us to play with a good posture all the time. And then once we have this neck strap setting set, I never want to be lifting the instrument with my right hand. If anything, I'm thinking about pushing the instrument out. So without the help of any of my fingers, I'm able to control movement of the instrument by pushing the instrument out, alleviating the stress from just my thumb, and moving that effort to the bigger muscle groups of my shoulder and back. Another small adjustment that we can make on our own is with the thumb hook of the instrument, lowering or raising it to the optimal playing position. A few things to note. If it's in the right place, we should be able to access the side keys rather easily, and our wrist can remain in a natural playing position. Let's apply some of these concepts in posture in a performance setting. In preparation for a group cue, I prepare to push the horn forward and let it return naturally. When standing with the instrument, I make sure that my back and neck are aligned naturally. I am relaxed through the shoulders, hips, and knees, and I'm grounded evenly between both of my feet. These concepts are still relevant even as I'm seated with the instrument. I sit towards the front side of the chair, and my head is lifted to prevent myself from slouching. A great question that I've been asked quite frequently is what neck strap or harness do I recommend using when playing the baritone saxophone? In long practice sessions or for extended blocks of rehearsals, I recommend the Van Doren harness. This device takes the weight of the instrument completely off of the neck and redistributes it around the hips, the back, and shoulders of our body. If I'm looking to move a little bit more freely in a performance, I'll choose a neck strap that distributes the weight of the instrument over a larger surface area. Some neck straps that have worked for me in the past include the Boston Sax Shop's Newbury Street Deluxe neck strap and BG's Yoke neck strap. If you're developing any pain or are getting fatigued at all in your practice sessions, take a break. Understanding your body is crucial in developing the endurance leading up to a quartet recital and learning how to safely and effectively build good practice habits on the baritone saxophone. challenges we face on the baritone saxophone is learning how to navigate between each of the registers of the instrument effectively. By extending our scale work and interval studies into music like the prelude from Bach's first cello suite, we hold ourselves musically and stylistically accountable for the technical skills we're trying to coordinate between our hands, embouchure, and airstream. When developing your sound on the baritone saxophone, it's absolutely crucial that you understand the relationship between a relaxed but focused embouchure and an active airstream. Someone that explains this very well is Dr. Chemi Ching, who on her YouTube channel provides a reverse voicing exercise on the baritone saxophone. By overriding the octave key in this exercise, you learn how to develop a much more active airstream, which then facilitates movement around the instrument. Let's see what it sounds like. <sighs> Another 
challenge that we face when playing an instrument of this size is making sure that we can play with as crisp of an articulation as possible. Again, focusing on an active airstream will allow us to create much more consistent and responsive articulations if we allow the tongue to ride on the airstream. In a lesson talking about cultivating a wider palette of articulations on the saxophone, Lars McClouch adapted a long tone exercise and turned it into an articulation exercise. By starting on focusing on a solid stream of air and then increasing the amount of time the tongue stays on the reed per articulation, we're able to recreate the variety of articulations we see in music. In addition to practicing everything that we talked about today, playing in a saxophone quartet is probably one of the best things that you can do for yourself as an aspiring baritone saxophonist. You learn to be the core and foundation of a group sound, you learn to be adaptive in tuning across a variety of musical contexts, and don't forget about all the extra exercise you're going to get from carrying this around, and you'll learn to stylistically match with your colleagues in your ensemble. Some of my early influences on the baritone saxophone include Tamer Sullivan from the Prism Quartet, Sumner Truax when he was playing with the Eastman Saxophone Project, and Stephen Banks from the Canary Quartet. However, I encourage you to keep your eyes and ears open to the artists from around the world across genres that have adopted and embraced the baritone saxophone in so many wild ways. Thanks so much for watching today. If you enjoyed what you saw, please like, subscribe, and share this content with anybody that you think would find it helpful. Join me next week as I discuss my journey with Musician's Wellness. See you next time!